All right, uh, waiting for that joint presser right now uh, from Donald Trump and uh, Shinzo Abe, the Japanese uh, prime minister. Uh, a lot of people have been all over the president on this chaotic approach to trade ahead of that crucial meeting uh, with the North Korean leader. Is this the time to be doing that? Whatever it is, though, does it work? In the end, does it work for the president of the United States? Because of the markets we're worried about it, even though we're well off our highs today, they haven't shown it yet. The Washington uh, Examiner staff writer Philip Redding is here, Independent Women's Forum senior fellow. Patrice Lenwuka and the Wall Street Journal chief economic commentator Greg Ipp. Uh, Greg, um, why, uh, with all this concern, the president is all over the map and that he's fighting with everyone? Is why why aren't the the markets free falling all of this? That would be the stuff of which a sell off could have conveniently been made in the past. I think the bottom line is that the amount of money at risk really are quite tiny in the you know relative to a twenty trillion dollar economy. So trade is a negative, but it's a small negative compared to the very big positive, for example, the tax cut, the sort of the tailwinds to global growth. Even the oil price, you know, which used to be terrible news for the United States, is actually probably marginally positive in the short run because we now produce so much shale oil. But, Neil, don't let that take away from the longer picture. In the longer term, protectionism, tariffs, those are bad for everybody's growth. So the fact the market's not responding today shouldn't take your eye off the longer term picture that it's a, it's a problem for the global economy. You know, Patrice, a lot of people have looked at protections and and said, well, even though they might not be fans of the president's approach on this, their eyes were open to that. so many countries, some with built-in sort of systems in place for decades, routinely do rig markets in their favor. And the president responding to that, whether that response is the way to go about it, has reminded folks this is happening a lot. Uh, you might not like tariffs, but a lot of countries have tariffs on us. It's true. I mean, I think we all are free traders, but I think the White House has talked about this as an issue of broken, a broken um, trade system where yeah, countries do exert their own protectionism when it comes to imported goods from America. So I think they're looking at it as a way of kind of leveling the playing field and ensuring that if we are engaging in free trade, that we're doing so uh, and that there's no free rider problems, that, there, that in, in fact, countries are not trying to protect their own markets at um, you know, the, the cost to American businesses. You know, it's one thing to talk about a trade war, Philip, right? Another to see it and to see prices go up because the governments don't pay that. You know, you and I do. And, and we're not at that point yet. But what happens if and when we do? Well, I think that what we're seeing right now is that the one thing that has come from a lot of this chaos is unity, unity of our allies against us. Already you see, I mean, for Japan is just one of the G7 nations that is coming together to lobby this administration not to enact these tariffs. And this is especially frustrating because while they're having those conversations with, with our allies who are helping us uh, remain the preeminent power in the Pacific, who are helping us contain that nuclear maniac in North Korea, uh, China is still belching out gluts of cheap steel onto the world market. This just seems counterproductive. Yeah, you know, I, I think, Greg, and maybe the president thought by getting our allies involved, he's sending a message to China that, look, I, I even do this again with my friends. Imagine what I'm going to do to you. What, what, what do you think of that? So I think that there are people in this administration who felt that the most productive way forward was, was for the president to form alliances with other countries who have the same problems with China that the United States does. And frankly, they all do. Not only that, in Congress and in the business community, there's a, uni a unity of view that, yes, it's worth a little bit of, you know, attention to get uh, China to change its ways. But as Phil was saying, we've kind of ended up in exactly the wrong place. We have a G7 meeting this weekend in Canada, and there will indeed be a united front on trade. But unfortunately, it's the other G6 against the United States instead of against China. The theory of the administration at the start was that the U.S. has all the leverage. Other countries need us more than we need them. So all we have to do is threaten tariffs, and they will play ball. They'll lower their barriers. That hasn't happened. Instead, other countries, Canada, Mexico, Japan, the European Union, they are raising barriers to us as retaliation. The only country where so far it's worked is South Korea. So maybe it'll eventually work. Thus far, I'd have to say the administration cannot be happy with the success of its approach. Do you agree, Patrice? I mean, I think they're, they're saying it's probably too early um, to see. Um, whether these tariffs are actually going to work. Uh, I think taking a very strong stance is, is where they think it's going to actually work out in the long run. Um, but, you know, we haven't seen all these retaliatory tariffs go into place quite yet, and we haven't seen the actual impact in the markets in terms of uh, the, the costs that Americans are, are paying every day for the items that they're importing. So we'll have to see where it happens. I, I do agree, though. I think that tariffs as a tool can be helpful, but at the end of the day,
way, if it's going to raise costs on businesses, raise costs on American families and what we're spending, then, you know, we have to, we have to really wonder if the trade-off is really worth it. You know, uh, Philip, real quickly, I, I talked to more and more people, some who like the president, others who don't, who like this bull in the China shop, uh, you know, style of his. That, well, he's shaking things up, and, you know, it's still too early to see how it's going to work out, but he's shaking things up. He's shaking things up. What do you make of that? Right. Absolutely. I mean, this president promised that he was going to be a, a chaos candidate, and he's that bull in the China shop. He is definitely, um, you know, moving the ball, changing the way that people have these conversations. But this is what's kind of frustrating here. If he wanted to have a conversation with Japan, he could have just picked up the phone. Our relations with them have been improving uh, ever since the Second World War. I, like I said earlier, they want us to be the preeminent power in the Pacific. They don't trust China or North Korea um, and they trust us though so if they were really you know flooding our market with you know uh, cheap video games or poorly constructed vehicles he could have had that conversation one-on-one -on -one. instead like Greg said a moment ago you see the rest of the G7 uniting against us so yeah what might work to sell condos in New York doesn't seem to be like it's working right now on the world stage you are so begging for a presidential tweet, aren't you? <laughs> I, could, I could just hear it now. Phil, sad, very sad. All right, guys, thank you all very, very all right, much. Thanks.